The individuals who run CARE here would not speak on camera because they have been accused of using the India people as a testing ground for poisons, meaning poisons genetically modified corn and soybeans obtained from the United States. Activists who are against genetic engineering and against the advancement of this technology have effectively intimidated them and they're worried that their good work here in India will be hampered and in fact perhaps eliminated. What's absolutely outrageous about this is that activists would prevent perfectly good food, safe for human consumption, going to starving people to alleviate their suffering. At a time when the world's population is expanding rapidly, the importance of scientific progress is all the more vital. There is only a finite amount of land, and experts fear that without recourse to new technology, the drive to grow more food threatens to devastate the world's forested areas. And even then, we may be hard-pressed to feed the world's growing millions. What would be the consequences if people who are opposed to genetic engineering actually succeed in preventing this technology from being utilized in India? If we slow down technological progress, it's these people who will actually pay the worst price. It's them who will pay with their lives for these it. Children these children and the children. people in the village. Yes. It's they who will pay their price. You know, 40,000 people die every day because of hunger and lack of food. And half of them are children. And this doesn't raise any eyebrows. I've heard this being called as a, a silent holocaust. I cannot conceive uh, uh, of a country in India or even Africa where we would stop using uh, any, any technology and any solution to address this humongous problem. See, I've got no problem if you decide to live in the past and if you want to deny yourself the potential and possibilities that technological change brings about. That is your business, that is your affair. What I'm concerned about is if you burden the people of Latin America, Asia and Africa with your prejudice. Most people in this globe are still relatively poor. Most people are still having to struggle to survive. Unless we find a solution to the problems of everyday life that they face in Africa or in Asia and Latin America, they aren't going to improve their, the quality of their life. And if they're going to be poor, the whole of humanity is going to be impoverished by that, by, by that process. So in that sense, anti-scientific thought is not just simply about science. Anti-scientific thought is ultimately anti-people. Agriculture, by definition, means messing about with nature. And part of this is altering plants to better suit our needs. And look how far we've come in the past 10,000 years. Since the first farmers began to till the soil, we have been learning more and more about how plants work. And by messing about with plants, messing about with genes, we have been able to produce ever more bountiful and healthy crops. But there is still much to be done. It is predicted in the year 2050, there'll be 10.5 billion people on the face of this planet. And in order to feed these people, will require us to produce more food than in the entire history of mankind. I believe in order to do this, we will have to use all agricultural technologies, including genetic engineering. <laughs>